Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sergei Brentsov. I'm from Yoru Dialog Systems. And uh, our company focuses on providing chatbot solutions for other businesses. Uh, among our, our clients, there are uh, S7 Airlines, Faberlic Cosmetics, uh, and many others. By many, I mean more than two. Uh, so, um, actually, why do all this? Uh, so, my speech m will be mostly focused on, uh, on chatbot uh, solutions for, uh, for these businesses as well, who are not large enough to have their own data, who, to have their own large data sets or their own data science departments for that. Um, but they still need to, they still need the chatbots, and for which reasons I will explain. So a chatbot is a form of compu human computer dialog systems which operates through natural language. So uh, that means basically that uh, chatbot is actually a program which needs to uh, get the question, get the query from user in natural language and to answer in natural language as well. Uh, so where do chatbots can help? First of all, in automating customer support. Um, next, in, next, chatbots uh, can act as an additional sales point. So what does it mean? You can, uh, provide, uh, uh, you can provide the list of your products and, uh, and answer the questions about your products uh, within, uh, within the chatbot. Uh, also, chatbots is a marketing tool. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all uh, chatbots can replace your mailing list since uh, people react to messages with chatbots uh, much better than to emails. And also, uh, and also when uh, chatbots are, uh, are on the peak, uh, it is also uh, a, good, uh, a, good, a good tool to show that your company is on the edge of, of technology. So why do we use chatbots for all that? Uh, first of all, natural language is the most common interface to the people. Uh, so elders are much uh, better in talking than in pushing buttons uh, with an app. Um, and uh, well, a, every, every person, I suppose, is better in natural language than in communicating with the computer. Uh, messenger apps are much more frequently used than utility apps. You can imagine how many people around you have a, have a, have a messenger app and how many of them have uh, an app of their preferred airline or cosmetics brands or clothes brands or whatever. The third point is that cons consumers prefer using messaging apps for contacting businesses uh, to calls or to emails, for example. And the fourth point is that it's cheaper than, than uh, having a huge customer support department, especially that, uh, that's important when we come to scaling. So suppose that you have that number of your customers uh, twice one day, one day and uh, you need to support all them. This is much simpler done with the chatbot. So we define uh, two different types of chatbots. Uh, the first one is app-like, which, which have a rigid structure. For this chatbots, user knows what to do next. Such bots are easy to design, they are easy to develop, easy to test. You just go through all the scenarios that you designed. And basically, it has the same functionality as an app. Uh, that works quite fine. Uh, but the problem is that why do you need such chatbot? Uh, basically, this is an example of a chatbot uh, for CNN. Uh, CNN and news network in Facebook. And uh, if you are really into reading the news every day, you'd better use the app than, uh, than, than the Facebook bot. So here comes the conversational chatbots. Uh, first of all, they provide the natural communication. They perform action in less, in less steps. So imagine that you, that, you need to, um, that you need to book a flight. And uh, if you do that with app, uh, you will need to choose. Uh, you need to choose that you need to book a flight. You need to define uh, your origin, your destination, uh, the date where you would like to fly. Uh, within uh, the, this conversational chatbot, you can provide this into one uh, one message. Uh, but at the same time, these bots are much harder to design and develop. Uh, you need to predict all the all different ways uh, that uh, that user can talk to you. Uh, for development, you need to classify the intents. You need to extract entities. So you need to get that uh, out of this single message. You need to understand that uh, your uh, that your client needs to book a flight. He needs to fly exactly to Boston, and uh, you need to extract the date. At the same time, you need to save. Uh, you need to. In this case, uh, the bot knows that uh, the origin of this flight is San Jose Airport. So you need to save information about your customer as well. So these are these bots are much harder to design and to develop. Uh, when it comes to design, uh, at each point you need to build your build uh, your bot replies 
such that user will, underst user will understand what to do next. So look, that's, uh, each uh, message has a question. Uh, and uh, even the last, uh, even the last uh, message says that, uh, su uh, suggests an extension for users. That means checking your email. These bots are impossible to test because you cannot even imagine how many ways there are to ask for a ticket to, to flight. Um, it seems that basically uh, th this will be a message with, uh, with some uh, with a city of origin, of destination, and the date. But, uh, but in reality, uh, people somehow invent, uh, invent uh, a lot of different ways uh, to expressing the same intent. Uh, the next point is that uh, bot may provide unpredictable answers. Uh, what do I mean by, by that? Uh, user, uh, user, when he asks, or a flight in this case, uh, you, uh, usually he may not know that a uh, bot will recognize his message. The, uh, bots, uh, people do not trust bots because, uh, uh, because they do not, uh, because uh, there is, it's impossible to, to give a guaranteed relevant answer. So that's, that, leads, uh, that leads to some, to some uh, crucial points in, uh, in user experience. So uh, we, uh, we usually use combining these approaches. So at some points, we have a rigid structure, and, other, and others there are free conversations. So in this case, uh, in the entry point, you have just three options. And then once you want to ask some question, there is, uh, here it comes to a conversational part. Um, that combines the clarity of app like chatbots and flexibility of conversational ones. Also, in the first point, you can say that you cannot just push a button here, but you can say in one message that I need to fly to Boston next Friday, and the bot will understand that. Um, so, here we come to the <laughs> topic of my speech uh, the machine learning uh, solution. Where does it come out of the way? Uh, basically, uh, basically, uh, Businesses do not trust generating, uh, generating bot replies to, to artificial intelligence yet. So that's why uh, we predefine, uh, uh, that's why uh, usually we predefine a, a set of replies which the bot can answer. And that's why it comes to, uh, it comes to classification problem. So I hope all of you know what this classification problem in terms of ML. Um, so in this case, we need to classify an intent. After a user says that uh, he needs to ask a question, we classify the intent. The intent. There are three options in, that case, in this case. Uh, the first option is that user needs to find a ticket. The next option that user needs to get flight steps. And the third is that he needs to ask a question. So we classify that. Uh, here is the third option. And uh, the next point is, uh, in this case, we, yeah. Uh, in, the, uh, in this point, uh, we have a, also a classification for question answering system. So we predefined a set of questions and a set of answers to them. And we need to classify that uh, for this message, user asks exactly for hand luggage. Um, and uh, sometimes it is possible to define this just by, uh, just by getting keywords or regular expressions. But, uh, but in many cases, it doesn't. So, uh, as I said, um, as I said, uh, chatbot can be considered as a classification problem. But uh, what? Uh, but as you know, classification and uh, other ML problems require data sets. So what to do if uh, you're a med if you're a medium rate uh, business and uh, you do not have huge data sets for that? Mm, then you use some pre-trained models. And one of options to them is use pre-trained models. Pre-trained models that uh, define uh, that find similarities between two two documents, two sentences, two queries. Uh, so all you need is to define some some predefined the answers and some queries that that user can ask to them. Note that there may be different queries for the same answer. And so when uh, when the user queries a bot, uh, the bot compares uh, compares uh, users query to the one of the examples to all of the examples. And answer and provide answer to the most similar query. Mm, uh, usually, uh, you can say that uh, you need, for example, uh, you need, for example, uh, question answering system in your bot. And uh, I think you, you know that uh, that most of uh, most of queries to to customer supports are usually a small amount of uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, and sometimes you may uh, you may want to just uh, give here answers uh, answers and questions from your uh, from your frequent last questions uh, section on your website, but this doesn't work well, uh, and I'll show you why. Uh, 
yes, uh, I, I missed one, one point, that uh, there may be a different similarity function, so this could be also, you, need, you may want to compare just a full match, for a full match of uh, theories, you may want to look for a rig expansion and for using ML methods, like uh, document to vector, triple plus network, so whatever. Actually, there may, may be different uh, options of vectorizing your queries and, uh, and uh, other options for uh, calculating similarity with neural networks as well. So, uh, what to choose? Uh, first of all, uh, that uh, determinant methods are interpretable. Uh, what do I mean by that is that if you define uh, that, uh, if you define that if a user, if user's query contain a word question, then you need to then you need to classify this as an intent of asking a question. And uh, whenever your bot classifies uh, this intent, you know why why he did that. So in this case, so we classified this as a question because this query contained the word question, and this query, and the, in this case we didn't do this because the query did not contain this word. Um, at the same time, ML methods provide better accuracy. By accuracy, I don't, do not mean metric, I mean uh, accuracy in common sense. They understand more wordings. And uh, the last point, that unintended results are much harder to fix. Uh, because as I said, usually these are uh, pre-trained models, and uh, the only the only way you uh, you can operate, yes, the, the only way you can uh, you can operate on uh, these methods are just uh, are just uh, defining this set of predefined users uh, queries and uh, answers. So how to predefine this? Uh, how to predefine them? And uh, what is more important, how not to do that? So the first of all, you should avoid using your brand name in query examples. Uh, so suppose you predefine these uh, these two questions. And uh, then, uh, then in chatbot, user asks, where is my brand cosmetic supplied? And uh, it is quite natural that uh, the most similar query to this uh, is this one, because it contains uh, my brand cosmetics, which, are, uh, which is quite rare word in the uh, language. And that's why uh, most of classifiers will define this as closest question to this, because they have same rare, uh, rare words. Uh, so, and the answer will be in Moscow. So how to avoid that? You need just to remove, uh, remove your brand from, from, the, from the predefined examples. Uh, even if these are not maybe grammatically correct, most of the classifiers will deal with that. Uh, and uh, why we can do this? Because uh, if, uh, if your customer uses your chatbot, he will most likely ask questions about your brand, about, uh, not about other brands. So you do not need to underline this in your examples. In the, also important point is that your answer should contain question. Uh, so th this, for example, uh, could be a good, uh, uh, a good question from frequently asked questions on your website section. But, uh, but in chatbot, this may not work quite fine. Uh, because whenever your user asks, do your cosmetics cause acne? The classifier may, uh, may classify this, this question as the closest to this, just because they really look similar. And the answer will be, sure, check one of these. Or, even, or it can be even harder. Do cosmetics cure cancer? Sure, check one of these. And how to avoid that? Simply, uh, simply uh, add a question to your answer. You need to underline that we cure acne. And now, it's, and now both of these questions, this less, but still, both of these answers make sense. You need to deal with the similarity values carefully. Uh, usually, uh, you need to define that. Uh, you need to define what to do if your classifier did not uh, did not uh, uh, did not found any class uh, close enough to the uh, to the user query. So you need to tune, tune the threshold where you will state that no answer is found. Uh, basically, there is no best practices to do this uh, except uh, just uh, just trying different thresholds and uh, uh, and the testing which gives better results. Next, you need to define what will your bot say if no answer found. Uh, here you can see that you can contact us via phone. And uh, users should understand what to do next. Um, the, and this, is me this message may be the most important message in your chatbot, because uh, first of all, user contacts you because he may have a problem, so he's already angry with your product. Uh, he, uh, bot failed to answer with him, so that's why he may get even more angry. And uh, and if uh, this message will be inappropriate, this will, you may lose a customer. So the classification is not the only, uh, the only point where machine learning applied in commercial chatbots. 
Um, another point is named entity recognition. That's about extracting entities from text, like dates, names, location, etc. Uh, this can be used uh, with uh, with some. So, for example, you can extract a location with a list of locations. Uh, you can extract da dates uh, with regular expressions. Uh, but the problem is that uh, sometimes you need to get uh, sometimes you need to get uh, different types of locations. For example. When you when your user books a flight, you need to uh, you need to extract location of origin and location of destination, and you need to define which of them is which. Uh, and also, uh, for some languages like Russian or German, which are uh, which contain different forms of words, uh, there, in this case, dictionaries of uh, entities may not work as well. So that's why uh, you may need some uh, advanced methods. Um, in my opinion, uh, one of the best are provided that. Uh, uh, are provided in open source is uh, Dipavlov's solution. I think they will be presenting next. Uh, and uh, another point is sentiment analysis. Um, sentiment analysis is extracting sentiment of text. So uh, you need to get the tone of your, uh, of your, um, of your customer's text. Um, why it is important? Because it helps in getting feedback. Uh, you may have seen uh, that when you contact some support, after the after a session, uh, the widget or the bot asks, "Did you like your support, or did you, you didn't?" Uh, why do this when you can do this unintrusively, just analyzing the tone of your speech? Uh, also, it can uh, if your dialogue, uh, if your bot supports transferring uh, transferring user to to human, uh, that sentiment analysis can help you with that. So if you see that uh, your user is well, your user provides uh, provide queries with low sentiment for several messages in a row. Uh, you may consider you may consider transferring the dialogue to operator. So uh, that's all I have to today. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I can answer them now. Basically, this is a problem which is called uh, slot filling, when you need to gain some information from user. This, uh, and uh, uh, how do you do this? Uh, basically, uh, first of all, you need to define uh, define which uh, uh, which um, which information you need to get from from the user. This should be in terms of flight. This will be origin, destination, dates, and also um, and also um, a crit criteria for sorting options. In this case, it would be cheapest or the most direct, and uh, you have uh, and for uh, and uh, you and your bot def need to define uh, which is uh, your bot need to define uh, which of this information is already known, like origin of, of a flight, for example, which you can get from the context. Uh, in this case, it was uh, from the first message you already knew where the destination and uh, the destination and the date. And um, and for for others, uh, for all uh, other pieces of information, you need to define how your bot will ask that. Um, the question which it was about like, cheap or fast, it was uh, so understanding that this is the question. It was the robust or you use some machine learning to understand that it's a good separation? Because in general, um, like we can ask a price and it's quite obvious because we can for price. But asking more complicated things like this is more sophisticated. Uh, currently, in commercial chatbots, uh, all the all the answers are predefined. So basically, that uh, uh, that means that uh, the designer of the the designer of the chatbot he decided that on this point we will ask uh, the criteria of the search, and th there will be two options: so cheapest or the most di direct. And uh, that's, so that's uh, that's not a piece of good technology. That's better. That's more a piece of a good design of a chatbot. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. And the second question is about mm -hmm. to analyze the just phrases or the dialogue itself. Um, 
both of these approaches are, are possible, of course. Uh, but I think that, is, that it is better to, to answer phrase by phrase, uh, to, to analyze uh, the sentiment phrase by phrase. Um, yes, that's a good point. Uh, to be honest, I think that uh, it is, uh, it's the question of the quality of sentiment analysis. So uh, I think uh, that, uh, I think that uh, if, you, really if, you're, if the query contains uh, a lot of short questions, uh, a lot of short uh, answers, ah, you mean short, short words or short answers? Short. Ah, uh, short answers in, case, in terms of chatbot. That's, uh, that is not a good sign because uh, usually uh, people talk to chatbots and to people differently. So in this case, I think that, um, uh, that, sh uh, that the fact that the user gives you short answers uh, is, uh, is possible even with, with positive sentiment. <laughs> Well, uh, I think it, is, it would be still possible to see, uh, to see it through time. Or at the same time, you can uh, do this in parallel. So you can, analyze, uh, f you can analyze message by message, and you can analyze the whole, the whole user text as well at the same time. That is still possible. Uh, uh, we, uh, usually, we do this on post-processing phrase by phrase, by phrase. So we do not do this uh, on the fly. But when we analyze, uh, when we analyze uh, the logs of, of, of our bots, we use sentiment analysis to detect the most crucial points, the, the points where it's, uh, the bot has not got enough to get positive feedback from user. Right. Thank you. Is that chatbot your chatbot or the uh, With the, the, the one that asks uh, about the bot, no, no, that, no, that's not ours. That's just an example. Uh, I, I don't know actually. I think that's a system called the match, something like this. Yes. So the, the one that I provided. Uh, where, 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 where? Yes, the, the the one that I provided here. That that's ours for uh, seven airlines skill for Alice. This one is ours. Uh, this one is. Uh, this one is not ours. Okay. And you got uh, information about the trips from the Atomo etc. Yeah, yes, yes. We, so we connect to the API of the company, yes, and uh, we get information about flights from there. Uh, that's also a good question because uh, usually, sometimes the APIs, uh, APIs uh, give answers for a very long time, but in chatbot you need to answer instantly, usually. Mm. Ah, with typos. Um, Uh, in case of determinant methods, usually we use uh, regex as determinant method. Uh, we deal with typos just with uh, with uh, with fuzzy pattern matching, so uh, so it's it's robust to the typos. Uh, in terms of uh, in in terms of when it comes to classification, uh, we um, we do not deal with typos right now uh, because. Yes, yes, we assume that input is correct. Uh, uh, that uh, actually is not a problem when we deal with, uh, with the voice interfaces. So uh, we, we have, uh, they are, they are on, the, on the rise right now. So usually when we deal with voice interfaces, that is not a problem. In, uh, in written chats, uh, uh, that may be a problem, but usually uh, a typo in one word may not be a problem. So for example, in this case, you have like, like seven words, and if the one is misunderstood, even if it's key about uh, luggage or hands, that's, um, that, that is still possible. That still would be possible to understand. And at the same time, at the same time, if there is a typo and uh, the bot fails to the, the bot fails to, fails to understand this, um, this is not actually uh, uh, mm, this is not actually maybe a problem because uh, because uh, if uh, user also understands that if bot did not uh, understand the, the wrong message. That is fine. That is possible. Okay. 
Basically, that's also the question of the of the design. So, when, you, for example, when your bot asks for a city and the user uh, a city of a destination, and user answers not a city or and not airport and not country or some irrelevant words, uh, that's why you uh, the, the, in this case, bot may say, "I didn't I didn't understand you." At the same time, you need to classify the you need to classify the intent as well. So, for example, uh, a user may uh, a user. Uh, so, for example, a user didn't provide uh, the information about about the city. Or, for example, in this case, uh, in, at this point, user may answer, "Oh no, I don't, I do not want to fly to fly anymore." So that's why, uh, in this case, you need to classify the intent of user to go back to the to the uh, uh, go back to the beginning of of a chat uh, in the beginning state. Uh, when you give, uh, for, there may be another example. When, for example, uh, bot asks. Uh, Cheapest flight or the direct, and user an user answers, uh, I don't care. Uh, in this case, uh, also uh, in terms of design, it should be designed that uh, this parameter uh, search criteria uh, may be cheapest, direct, or I don't care. So that's uh, that's uh, more the question of, uh, of the design. So in this case, you need to define as much options uh, as much options as you as you can handle, and you need to handle changing of intent as well. Yes. Uh, actually, um, so yes. That that's basically human today. Um, and uh, okay. How question uh, about translation of such human design? Because basically, mm -hmm. basically, uh, it's really hard work to think of all these errors random and give them to. Uh, people who will write. Uh, I'm not sure if in a couple days the same people who write in errors and write no, the yeah, I mean, so they synchronize um, have approached some thoughts on the way this uh, might work. Mm. Uh, I agree that uh, the design is the hardest uh, in the hardest uh, is the hardest point of a uh, of a of developing a chatbot. Uh, that's uh, so we have several uh, we have several options for that. So, for example, uh, for for easy design, you can uh, provide uh, uh, you can provide some building blocks of uh, of a chatbot. So uh, this may be block of question answering system, a block of slot filling, uh, or uh, for example. And uh, in this case, uh, the designer should uh, define should in terms of question answering uh, block. Uh, designer need to define questions and answers in terms of. Uh, uh, in terms of slot filling block, uh, designers should define uh, should define what to ask and how, um, and uh, th this simplifies a lot. Uh, and also, there are some uh, there are some options uh, that simplify this. Is uh, context that uh, the designer should say which information from this message uh, user should. Uh, which information from this message uh, the bot should save. So, for example, uh, we could uh, imagine the following bot that um, user user defines that he wants to fly to Boston, and the designer says that uh, Boston is our context now. So it's a city we are talking about. And then the next message user asks, for example, uh, user asks, for example, and uh, what is the weather there? And in this case, uh, the the, bo the bot should uh, get it from context, or there is no city in context. Uh, bot needs to ask. So that's just an example. So in this case, uh, all all the designer need is just to say that uh, from this message you save from this message you save uh, city as a context, and uh, in this message you need to, you you fetch this message uh, you fetch the city or there is no city you fill this you you ask the bot for this. That's uh, that's option. Another option is uh, defining intents. So in each step uh, in each step uh, the bot developer should define that you classify the intent. Uh, to define if the user wants to change the scenario, um, and uh, the designer needs to define what are these intents, uh, what are these intents be, um, and I think that's also. But basically, there are three options that simplify the design. 
these are blocks and tents and contexts. And as a question of questions, this is another option you are asking. Uh, so, sorry. As a question of asking questions, something that in general we can think of how we can learn a model which can ask questions in a way which is not specific. Ah, uh, Th that is uh, um, that is not something that need uh, that is not uh, that is not a very blocker problem right now because uh, actually uh, there are uh, actually there is uh, not a, uh, not a lot of such uh, of, of, of such possible questions so that's why in general uh, in general it's uh, it's much easier to predefine them uh, to predefine them and maybe to define them in different forms such they may uh, that, that such that they look natural in different uh, in different contexts Contexts. Yes, that's actually. Okay, and we still have time, so still be the Ah, sorry. So, when you understand that it's field search for the history of the court, so for instance, what the weather is now, and you understand what this is, it's just like it. So, we just go back to history and try to figure out access to the separation. You try to Check if the person had already set the time to the same the person. So, uh, yeah, how do you So, how far you go in history? How do you decide that? This uh. is related to this question. Basically, it is usually related to a context. context. So, um, so in, some, in some points in the dialogue, uh, we define that, uh, for example, you can define that whenever you see, uh, you see a city in user speech, uh, you give, you determine uh, you uh, you enter this in the co in the current context, and uh, and in the point where you need to get a city, you search co the context for that, and then you define uh, and then you define uh, uh, then you uh, and then you get this question. And uh, if uh, there is no context, uh, there is no city in context, you ask for that. Uh, in the terms of how long to, for history, uh, I get a question that uh, the the uh, the context is not eternal. So if uh, th that's why you define uh, you define uh, the time to live or all entities here. So for example, we say that uh, if we um, if if at some point user tells us the city, then we get that. Um, and then we put it in context with the time to live, for example, six queries. And within next six messages, if we, if we need some city, uh, we will take this one. But if it will be later than th if it will be later than uh, in six messages, and we did not get any new city, uh, then we say that uh, all right. So there there is no city in context. We don't we do not know which city we are talking about. So, so we do not go back in history. We are managing this uh, with with context. Okay, so this means that you need to know possible contents for all of the Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, imagine, uh, like, uh, the question, like, in Russia, I know that in Russia will be a festival of Korea. Do I need to get a visa? Mm -hmm. uh, the what you want to for Korea or for Russia? Uh, it is uh, where named entity recognition comes to place. That depends of, of named entity recognition system. So, uh, if it is good enough, it will understand that uh, that Russia is a country and Festival of Korea is a Festival of Korea is a is an event. Uh, well, that that depends. So uh, of course, uh, of course, that's what I said. What I mean by impossible to test, you you never will be able to imagine uh, to imagine different uh, different options. Uh, to imagine all the options that that user can say, and uh, and in any time you may invent an example which which will be handled uh, incorrectly by bot. So uh, in this case, in this case, I think that uh, if you need, uh, in this case, there will be defined uh, something like this: that uh, uh, our location we are talking about is Russia because it is given in Russia, so uh, in the world, so the, and of Korea. So the location we are talking about is, is in uh, within. So we can extract. Uh, uh, the, there are two options. So the first one is just to extract all the countries. And if we contain two, just pick random. Uh, and uh, the, the other point uh, is that uh, we are talking about the, lo uh, the location. And in this case, I think that uh, the form of, uh, of in some country should be preferred to off country. Uh, so that's, uh, that's again uh, partly uh, so that's again partly a question of design. 
and a question of development. And uh, what was uh, and uh, there is a rule that uh, what is too hard for develop for de for developers uh, in this case uh, determ determine determine uh, which uh, which country we are talking about. Uh, yeah, so if it is too hard for developers, then it is better to to, to solve by design. Uh, so uh, in this case, you you really all, or, or you just pick a random country, or you take uh, or you define that in some country that is the country we are talking about. Uh, basically, uh, we have uh, the following guideline: that uh, if there are, if you need to collect four different fields or slots, then you may ask them with bot. Uh, if you ha if you will need to ask five or more, then it is better to do the following: uh, you you um, you collect some predefined information. For, uh, you collect some predefined information in bot, and then you say, uh, say them, all right, I get what you want, so now uh, move to this website, and there you, uh, where you get uh, other, uh, where you get other fields for the field you need. Uh, so, for example, in this case, uh, we get, for example, we need that, uh, we know that user needs to travel to Russia, and uh, he needs to get a visa, then we, we may ask of, f within bot, some, for example, uh, what time does he travel? Uh, what, what time does he want to travel? Um, and then uh, we uh, will link him to a website where he needs to enter his credentials. For example, uh, no, not credentials, but his n n name and uh, and uh, documents and, and all this stuff. Also, it is very important because uh, also it is very important that uh, due to Russian laws, you cannot transfer uh, personal data with uh, with external services. So when you use external messaging apps. Uh, you uh, you need to collect personal data from your user within a, an external service uh, within your website, basically. Yeah, uh, so, uh, um, sorry, I just remember one question because it was about like uh, a subscriber for sure, a subscriber which tells you like what is the slot that it should be, and what's the probability that it's to run something. Yeah, this is the. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and in most of the cases, you don't have uh, 1.0 profits, so you have something like 0.6, ah. mm -hmm. 0.7. Mm -hmm. But you can ask the person, but at this answer, maybe not post the software. Mm -hmm. But you are telling me that you have a good class hand. You can just, okay, I have post, but you have a good class with what the person asked. On the right hand, you can ask him many questions, and the person just has the time to answer. Not, not really. Oh, yeah, so, because uh, we need to detect to which country it is mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so, uh, we have this fire which tells us, hi, this content, this slot should be filled with Russian mm -hmm. But we're not sure. We ask, do you want to go to Russia? It's <coughs> ah. also good. But he may answer, like, yeah, I agree. Uh, so, it's still like probabilistic uh, mm -hmm. here because we for sure are going to be in. In general, when you have some uh, when you have some point of con uh, when you have some consistency value uh, in our in our system in our chatbot, uh, basically the only way to choose the optimal 
uh, the only way to choose optimal policy for that is, is just uh, testing, because a different system uh, defines different uncertainty, uh, uh, define bit, uh, different uncertainty dif uh, differently. Uh, what do I mean by that? For example, for some classification, the values may be from zero to one, uh, to one uniformly distributed, and for some cases there may be some normal distribution that most of cases are around 0 0.5, and uh, only rare is uh, at one and at zero. Uh, so the only way of doing this is testing. Uh, is testing and choosing the optimal th threshold. Uh, and uh, and usually, usually, uh, usually this comes only to intent classification and to question answering systems. Uh, because uh, usually when you have uh, when you have some when you fill some slots, uh, there is actually a d usually it is, de it is uh, determined that uh, there is either you know the country or you do not know the country. Uh, it uh, comes very rarely that you, that you know the country with probability 0.8. Uh, so at least, at least I uh, have not met, met a system which extracted this, uh, these entities with, uh, with some probabilities. So th 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 that is. Ah, that is. Uh, you mean if the, the reason you see disappear in your in your list or disappear, or you mean, or do you mean within within the chat chat or within within the conversation? Uh, so if you're talking about if you're talking about that uh, the case when uh, the user changed their mind that he uh, that. I think I think that's not not possible in in general. So you you can you can find then uh, you can find the way to do this, but we do not do that currently. So, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, one last one question. Uh, how do you work with the modeling when we have the same data and the same data in Russia? Ah, ah, well. Um, We, we do we do not work with that. Actually, that is that is too, that is too, 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 that is usually too rare. But because so, uh, why, why do I mean by this uh, too rare? I mean it, it comes uh, so uh, currently in our experience we worked with uh, or with only companies who are oriented to Russia more. And in this case, we defined uh, the, the Saint Petersburg as, as a Russian city. And uh, for uh, and uh, if you. Um, in this case, I think that is uh, that is uh, the, there are two, two options. To, uh, actually, there are only one. There is one option to uh, to to, uh, to to solve this uh, is to get some external information from user. Uh, this may be user's location, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, in this case, it is still maybe unclear if user is from New York, for example. I think that he may want to fly to to Saint Petersburg and Russian and to uh, American Saint Petersburg as well. Uh, so, and uh, another point is that if you're using some uh, some other messaging service, they this may not provide you the information about the location. Or, but I think the best way is uh, the best way is just to ask user what what Saint Petersburg do, do you mean? And it, this game, uh, this term, uh, this uh, in this case uh, also it is the question of design. So uh, there may be, uh, for example, uh, uh, a solution like this. If user comes uh, from a phone starting from plus seven. Then we exactly know that it is Saint Petersburg in Russia, because uh, even if he, even if he will like to travel to American Saint Petersburg, he may underline it, uh, for example, uh, especially that Saint Petersburg in America, or more likely uh, that uh, user will uh, user will predict that bot will not handle will not handle American Saint Petersburg, and he will try another way of doing that. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.